Welcome everyone in the pavement structure and design. Uh, you can also follow me for the highway and traffic engineering subject as well as for the transportation planning and management for the pavement analysis and design, research methodology and sustainable development. The above two subject are uh, designed for the under are uh, designed for the undergraduate student who are pursuing their academic career in uh, civil engineering while the rest of the three students are uh, designed for the postgraduate student. Uh, in the lecture we will mainly cover uh, different topics such as what is pavement, what are different types of pavement and also we will talk about the failure criteria. We will also talk about the contract pressure and pavement uh, service ability index. We will also try to understand what is the uh, what are the principle of the pavement design. We will also talk about the uh, repetition and relative damaging factor and also we will learn some design approaches as well such as empirical and mechanistic uh, empirical method. We hope if you will uh, stay with me, if you will stay tuned with me, uh, the, the main objectivity or the outcome of the of this subject is to analyze and also learn how to design the pavement. As you can see here from the very first slide uh, is usually people talk about what is road or pavement. Basically road or pavement is the actual travel surface which is actually made durable and serviceable to withstand the load against heavy loading coming from the vehicle okay as you can see here in this figure uh, above the road surface the that uh, black mark is called that uh, black mark is called wearing course or the top course below that wearing course we have the formation bed the formation bed is basically constructed from different materials along with sile and binder where the pavement load is directly transmitted. The second important object is about uh, below the, the top layer we have the base course. So the question is what is base? We have different kind of a bases such as class A and class B. Base course is, is a foundation is, a, is the layer which is exactly below the top layer where all the loads are acted and transmitted to the subgrade from the base course. So the sub base is basically near to the near to the natural ground surface which is usually constructed and made from the local available material while the the uh, that specific uh, black line the 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 black line are, uh, is constructed from the is constructed from the bitumen R tar. So, if someone asks you what is bitumen R tar, bitumen R tar is a chemical is a chemical mixture of carbon, hydrogen, mixture of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. When we add there, add a clean water, that became a bitumen R tar. Okay. Now we are coming towards pavement. What is pavement? Okay, so we will try to learn conceptual things, but uh, during the but uh, during the lecture, if something, if I just said something, so you need to write it down. Here we have the two important terms. First is that the load, the the uh, the coming load from the wheel, it should be distributed should be distributed and transmitted. So here we have a, we are trying to deal with the two parameters. Number first is distribution. So distribution means uh, uh, the same word which you already learn in, in your structural analysis which we call UDL, uniformly distributed load. Basically that's what we want from the pavement that the coming load it should distribute it evenly or the magnitude of the load should remain uniform while the transmission means that the load transferring capacity it also means the tendency to determine 
the discontinuity it creates our joint means first of all we want to distribute the load over a large area and transmit it from the top layer to the lower layer now we are trying to learn the functions uh, the function is you can see here on the screen apart from those function it should give us a safe comfort reliable ride when we drive on it so there should not be like there should be very limited roughness and also uh, there should be a geometric smooth uh, geometric design it should also uniform surface and uh, there should be a uniform cross profile as well okay so these are the functions of the pyramid now you want to learn about the design life keep in mind the design life is composed on two things uh, in the upcoming slide we will learn about the like the different flexible and uh, rigid pyramid but here you need to understand one thing that maintenance is very important parameter I would like to add here one comment regarding the uh, German railway system in uh, 2009 the railway minister announced that Germany is uh, spending more money on the maintenance rather than extension so uh, and someone asked from him that why you are spending that much money so his reply was amazing he said we are trying to secure the movement and we want to give the safe ride to the people so it means that maintenance or reconstruction of the infrastructure is directly related to the human life as you can see here we have two different types of the pavement one is called flexible pavement while another one is called rigid pavement usually i ask from the student that what is the core difference between both of them flexible you then student come up with the, that the flexible have a is constructed from the bitumen or tar while the rigid is constructed from the uh, concrete and reinforcement that is correct but when someone asks you that what is the structural difference between both of them so the structural difference between both of them is that flexible system is constructed or a layered system where each and every layer is connected with each other while rigid pavement is constructed uh, with, with foundation or without foundation foundation means subgrade where most of the of the loads are acting or commuting upon the slab as you can see here the flexible system the flexible pavement is is consists on a layered system is as we already discussed in the uh, previous slide while the rigid is constructed or a slab while uh, if we talk about the uh, flexible we have a quite uh, conventional geometry such as base sub base and subgrade while in the rigid we may or we may not provide the sub base we will also learn in the upcoming slide that why we provide sub base okay uh, the flexible pavement is constructed or a compacted subgrade while in rigid pavement we really don't care about the about the subgrade quality because most of the load is acting and counteracting on the slab okay uh, the flexible pavement have a lower construction cost but very higher maintenance cost and the lifespan is completely depend on the usage while the rigid pavement is highly construction cost but the maintenance is lower and of course it's uh, service time or durability duration is higher as compared to flexible keep in mind if if you want to give answer to someone regarding the age of a pavement uh, like for example 15 or 20 year 15 or 20 year are just a theoretical years or like theoretical figure do not forget to add there a like the age with maintenance as you can see here the two different type of a of a pavement one is called flexible another one is called rigid the flexible pavement is constructed over a uh, subgrade okay when uh, but both of them are different in the transmission of load when we have a flexible surface 
because of the viscoelastic material a lot of pressure is acting on the very top surface and base course and wearing course are extremely under stresses and strain while uh, in the flexible pavement if the thickness is, is like lower the load sometime act is a point low but if we talk about a rigid pavement rigid pavement as i mentioned in the previous slide that we have a slab surface where the load is uniformly transmitted and distributed over a large surface which is basically the definition or the philosophy of the rigid pavement but keep in mind that doesn't mean that we prefer rigid pavement the selection of flexible and rigid pavement is completely depend upon the situation so what are the functions okay so we are trying to know the the functions of the rigid pavement so the functions is basically the very first one is about the uh, transmission okay about the transmission like rigid pavement are built on the material which possesses sufficient rigidity what is rigidity rigidity or stiffness are two different terms so if we if someone ask you about rigidity rigidity is basically the material resistance to bend okay wo taqat jiske through wo wo for example wo for example if there is a load acting on a on a material so how much resistance uh, or the tendency in the material have which is against to bend so rigidity is the material rigidity is the material resistance to bend where strength is a material resistance to breakage okay agar if, if we talk about stiffness so stiffness is basically the measure of elasticity which represent which represent material resistance to permanent deformation in rigidity we have a time being deformation or changes but in stiffness we have the permanent deformation or changes while the uh, rigid pavement is the second point is uh, is about that it is constructed over a concrete surface where the load is distributed through a slab action okay and it is also not dependent on the subgrade as well while rigid pavement is also designed for the heavy traffic here as you can see here about rigid pavement uh, so above we have a concrete slab and it's below we have a subgrade so the subgrade is uh, is depend upon the condition sometime we may or we may not provide but the uh, subgrade is uh, is very in size which is around 40 to 45 or 50 or in some condition 60 mm uh, it's completely depend upon uh, the the few test before to provide it or not to provide it such as dynamic cone per uh, dynamic cone uh, penetrometer test of course and cbr california bearing ratio and plate loads and tri axle compression keep in mind in a very simple definition uh, here as you can see here why we provide sub base you can also read my article which is exactly published on the to determine the control pumping effect in joint help in concrete pavement but we provide the sub base for like different actions such as to control the the frost heave action what is what is frost heave action frost heave is basically the the kind of a swelling effect or the the upward movement of the subgrade resulting from the expansion uh, because of the accumulated soil moisture okay when it freeze for example when we have a snow uh, on the surface but with passage of time the same snow look if we can if we take two condition number one is when we have a rain and the second one when we have a, a snow uh, under the condition of a rain uh, there is a very less chances of infiltration if all the materials are properly bound and there is no place to infiltrate the water in the supporting layer but in in the terms of frost heave action because the snow takes a longer as compared to the rain as compared to the rain 
to like drain off from the surface. The second one is about drainage. Drainage is the ability through which we improve the condition and also want to remove the water from the from the surface condition and also we want to control the shrinkage of course as well and for that purpose we usually use the high permeable uh, aggregate for the purpose to improve the load distribution or a large area the next slide is about what are the principle of the uh, pavement design so the first point is about tensile and compressive stresses which are induced by heavy wheel load which de which which should decrease with the passage of time that means when whenever we have the the load is acting from the top so at the top surface there should be compression while at the lower surface there should be tension but the ultimate ultimate response or through which we usually determine the tendency of the pavement that how much ability it should have when when we want to counteract uh, counter its performance so that with increase in depth the load stresses deformation and strain should decrease the second point is about the in the flexible pavement about the gradation of material okay highly high rigidity material it should be used at the top okay gradation strong and expensive means that for because the load is acting on the wearing course as well as on the base course so in those two layer we will use such type of material which which should have a, a higher rigidity the third point is about the local available material it should be used at a at a sub base layer where we have a less application of the load while the last point is about that we should use the optimum material in optimized thickness of a layer the first point also did also indicate or refer towards the thermal cracks as well okay when tensile stresses exceeds from the tensile strain which occur in a transverse direction so we have also higher chances of a tensile uh, like a very huge increase in, in tensile and compressive stresses